Okay, everybody, this is part three of the story how God brought uh, my wife to me and how she brought, or how God brought uh, uh, me to her, actually. And the, what we've actually been listening, what you've been listening to, is really the, um, the impact and the move of God's Holy Spirit upon uh, Anna and how I think it's very important for women that are listening to these videos how God works now he's not going to work the same way but it's going to be the same God and he's going to want to mold and shape and conform and allow you and cause you to go through a series of many things before he uh, brings you to your Adam just like he did with Eve and so, with that being said, we can continue on, and I will let uh, Anna go ahead and continue. The last part of, or the last part of the second video, we were talking about how she was cleaning out the van and giving away things at God's command. Again, at the same time, neither one of us are really communicating with each other. Uh, of course, I'm asleep, I'm doing videos, I'm doing what God tells me to do not cultivating any type of relationship with her or going in any direction that would even remotely resemble the beginning of a relationship. I was, as the scripture says, still asleep. So as we continue on, Anna will continue to tell, share with you what God did from there. So when he had me clean out the van and give everything away. I knew that he was preparing me for my future, but I didn't know what really. I just knew that it was best to clean out and get things out of the van and because Adam did that video about emptying the one room, I knew he was confirming that for me. And then he also did a video about um, somebody was going to be blessed Gideon style and Gideon had to also decrease his um, warriors military. the military and so that also hit home for me and I knew that something was gonna happen soon but I didn't know when or how at this point um, so you went on from there and there was a period of time that went on from after removing everything from the van and um, then you sent me another email. So this is the fourth email of this entire thing. Four different times. The fourth and really final time, actually, as we'll hear uh, Anna explain. Yeah, so I was at a grocery store and I was sitting there praying, asking God if it was okay to reach out to Adam and he actually told me to tell him I was safe, just to let him know that I was safe. And to ask him, what I told him was, I'm safe, I wanted to let you know I'm safe, and thank you for telling me safe places to sleep. And that I was getting very tired of wondering when my Adam type was going to show up. <laughs> and um, that I had to keep ducking and dodging all these crazies who were coming at me as counterfeits and just as a friend I was telling him these things because I wanted him to know that I was safe on my journey and I knew at that point he just said he we could be friends but I knew in my heart what God was telling me and so I asked him because I've never asked him for, for a prophetic word a direct word for myself um, and God told me ask him for a word I have a word for you so I asked him, do you have a prophetic word directly for me personally? And he came back with... Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. He told me to enjoy myself, which up until this point, I really wasn't enjoying much of my journey. I was more focused on learning and growing and uprooting things out of my life. And I was very... Um, humbled by a lot of his videos he was doing. I was down on my knees praying, asking the Lord for direction. 
I was changing my point of view of life. I was coming out of the world and becoming a new creation that God was creating me to be so that I could be Adam's helper. And all this time was very serious, very much learning, a learning experience, always in the word, praying, reading, hearing from the Holy Spirit. And he finally, it was like he unlocked the door for me and said, just enjoy yourself. And Adam suggested three beaches that I go check out. And so I, I started doing that and I ended up swimming in the ocean and running around and having a good time and meeting other people and telling them certain things about my testimony. And I met this woman and she was painting a picture of the sun in the palm trees at the beach. And we talked for about an hour and I told her that the Lord was directing me to my husband, but I didn't know where it was somewhere in this area. And she gave me, she shared with me a story about how her son was in the same position and at the exact same area, his wife was brought to him from God as well. And we, we really connected and, um, I sat there and talked to her for about an hour and we gave each other a hug and she told me don't give up he's coming you're gonna find him soon and then what well, the whole time I really didn't have a whole lot of food so I was praying asking God to provide for food for me and um, there was times where I would find an orange that fell off a tree on the ground and the Lord would tell me there's your food I'm providing and there was lemons that fell off the tree and I so I was eating lemons and oranges and this day on the beach there was a watermelon just a small watermelon but it was sitting there and God said that watermelon's for you so I picked up the watermelon and on it was a sticker that said pure heart and I knew he was talking about Adam that Adam had a pure heart and he was providing food for me there I was so excited and happy that I was just enjoying myself and God was just raining down the blessings. And I knew soon that I was going to meet Adam. And in the same email that you were asking, I guess there was a fifth email, I thought there was a fourth one, but that's when you asked for, uh, am I at least close to you? Yeah, after I met the woman, and God had given me encouragement through her story. And he told me it was okay to ask Adam if I was close. So I sent an email and I said, am I at least close to you? Um, hoping and praying that he would wake up soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my response was actually a series of uh, Bible verses. The Lord immediately gave me different uh, examples in the scripture. And that was my moment of God waking me up. All of a sudden, a rush of different Bible verses, and God was really speaking to me about her and what his plan was for me and her, where that was not non-existing before. It was the scene that you could just imagine where God was bringing Eve to Adam. And that's what that scene was, but God was using his word to confirm that. Now, I can only imagine the same way, even though Adam had never seen another human being in the Old Testament, or let alone a woman, that he sees this woman coming to him. He wakes up and, and they meet. And so, after there was those scriptures that were confirming, and I was sharing with her, then we decided to meet. And uh, that would have been... Well, he uh, told me I was 10 minutes from there. Oh, I said, it, yeah, actually, yeah, I, after, I said, you, the, when you were at the Walmart the first time and you spent the night there, that you were um, 10 minutes from me at that point. That's when I let her know how close she was by the time she came into California. And the morning we were supposed to meet, the enemy tried to get me again and my car wouldn't, my van wouldn't start. And I needed, we were supposed to meet at 2 o'clock mm -hmm. at a Walmart, which the Lord had told me all the way from the beginning that we would meet at a Walmart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so 
I had to find help that day. I really prayed and asked God, help me find someone, show me who is, you know, I can trust to help me. And he did. He brought two different people around to help me. And I actually shared my story with them, how the Lord was leading me to my husband. And it was like he wanted me to share these things with certain people who were coming to help me. And they were showing God's love through their help. And I ended up getting the jump from my van and getting to the Walmart two hours actually in advance because I wanted to make sure I was there on time. And then... I was doing something that day that I needed to be gone uh, until that particular time. So that uh, it gave me enough time to actually go and meet. And so we did meet, and Anna will tell you. As soon as we met, I just saw a big smile on Adam's face, and I got out of the van and basically ran to him, and we hugged. For a long time. And it felt like I fit right in his ribcage where I belonged. Yeah, we didn't, either one of us knew each other, but in that moment, we did. It was like meeting someone that we had, or seeing someone that we had seen before a long time ago. That's how both of us have kind of come to that place with each other, is that uh, that uh, it's like we met each other a long time ago and there was a reunion. It was like we've always known each other. Yeah. It was an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. It just blew my mind because I didn't know that I could ever experience that. And, I, and that's the, one of the reasons why we're telling this story, especially you men listening to the story that you're single and you're not sure what God is going to do. Follow Genesis chapter 2. Hold that into your hearts and trust and agree and confess or whatever it, take, it takes to understand that that is how God does it. That is how God does it. That's how God brings the woman to you if you try to do it another way because we all have in many things in our lives we try to go out on our own and not really seek God's direction through his word then we've got a lot to clean up afterwards most of the time that is unnecessary unnecessary challenges unnecessary unnecessary battles and um uh, and healing and reconciling and all these other things that that uh, we need to do as a result of the poor decision making in our lives and God is just he wants to cause a miracle to happen and it is a miracle when a man and woman come together that is a miracle just like salvation one of the biggest things he was teaching me was patience and to not lean on my own understanding because a lot of things I did not understand what I was doing or why I was doing it. <clears throat> but God said, just trust me and don't lean on your own understanding. And now <clears throat> a lot of the things I do understand once we met, it makes sense why he had me do the things. But not, you just have to have faith and trust that God will get you to where you need to be in the finish line. Oftentimes too, the Lord will always command us to go, and then he brings explanation or provision or clarity. But many times people want clarity before they go, and that's not faith. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And we want to see the substance and the seeing, and then call it faith. And that's not faith at all. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. So all of this is really about him. Even though there are great uh, different things about great examples of God's faithfulness. It's really about him. And, it, and in, in order for this to succeed just like any other thing. It has to remain about God. It's got to be, remain about the direction he gives us all as believers in his word. And the cool thing is, is we were already living the same type of lives when we met each same. other. Yeah. 
We just weren't doing it together. We were both basically on the missionary field. And now we're together doing it, still trusting God and still moving our feet forward before we understand. We're just leaning on God, doing this traveling. And our life hasn't changed. It's just become greater all about God. So, too, we were... Um... We traveled away, after we met, We tra within a couple of days, we traveled away from um, California and landed somewhere else. So we ended up being, uh, it was like 12 days, 12 or 13 days, and we were married, yeah. March 9th. So, and then now, at the end of this video, it is two months and 10 days, and we have traveled 30 days states together sharing the word of God and our testimony that's right yeah, for they overcame by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the lamb and so we continue on doing what God tells us to do and so that's the story is there anything else you'd like to share? Nope, that's it. All right, you guys. Hopefully this blessed you. And notice also in all three of the videos that there's a shrub, then there's a shorter tree at a rest stop that we were at, and now this big tree. Some uh, One of the subscribers uh, mentioned that in a comment, and we noticed that after they mentioned it, so we decided to put the bigger tree in as the and the chirping of the birds for you too. God bless you guys. Have a good day.